Hello everyone and welcome back to our AI series. We're going to continue looking at the AI perception system, in particular looking at the prediction sense, talking about how it works and how we can use it. So let's jump in and get started. So before we put in our prediction sense, let's talk about what is the actual problem it's solving. So the issue that we have when we lose sight of our character, they are going to just head towards a last known location, which is basically just the last location they saw us in. But if we're moving, it doesn't take into account which way we're actually going and try to cleverly figure out. Like, for example, this pole here, if I run to this other side, he's just going to keep running around that side, even though he knows that I would have gone this side. So we want him to predict that I've gone around to the other side of the pole, for example. So we're going to do that by going into the AI's controller and going to the AI perception. I'm going to go and add another perception to this. That's going to be the perception sense config. So on the handle site sense, we're going to go over to where we at the end are setting it to false and getting the last line location. Instead of this blind, blindly setting this up as the location, we're going to do a prediction. So type in the word prediction and you should see the request for a pawn prediction event. We click on this and we'll plug that into false there. Now the predicted actor and requester are pretty simple to fill out. The requester is itself, so that would be the uh, the currently controlled pawn. Get controlled pawn. And the predicted actor is who we're currently looking for. In this case, they're looking for the player character, so we could just check it against the player character. We're going to put that in there and put that in here. And the prediction time is how long is it going to predict it for. Now the way the prediction works is it's going to look at the velocity of the character, look at their current speed and direction, and over time, this time, uh, to work out where they think it will be in that certain time frame. So in two seconds, where will they be? So you want to ideally keep this prediction time quite small. Um, so we'll do one or two seconds. We'll do two. And we'll hit compile and save that. Now, part of that is I don't want to use the last known location now at the end here. So I'm going to disconnect that for now. And we're going to make a new handle event for handling predictions. So for this, I'm going to take the handle sound sense. I'm going to duplicate that and do handle prediction. And in here, we're going to change the class here to prediction. So AI sense prediction. And then on here, let's make a little name. We're going to change this to rather than target location to that last known location. So let's go back to handle site sense. I'm just going to copy that text there and put that into my prediction function there. Okay, so I hit compile and save that. So now I can go back to my event graph and I can add this in to handle perception, uh, prediction and plug in the stimulus. Compile and save that. So let's now see that in action. If I go ahead to the character and go into debug and turn on the perception debug, when you lose sight of me, you'll see, hold on, and lose sight now, you'll see there's been a track to see where I've gone, okay, over there. So he's taken that competition in two seconds, I'd reach that distance. So you can see what I mean by the time frame being too long or too short can be a big problem. So in here, I feel like two seconds might be too long. So I can run around this way. You can see he's predicted that I'm going to go head over there. And he's going to head over to that direction. As he hears me or sees me before then. Okay. So that works pretty well. So I'm going to turn it down from two seconds down to one second, I think. Um, so we go back to the sight sense and change the prediction time here down to one second. I should bring it in a bit tighter. I'll get rid of this old code now. And take a look at that in action. So I'm in prediction mode, and he's predicted that I'm on this side of the pole. So, and he's now tracking where I'm going. His rotation's a bit messed up, uh, but we can have a look at that in a minute. So here he's seeing me and coming after me. When he loses sight of me. He's going to the old location, which is an issue. We don't want him to do that. Yeah, we want him to go to the new location. So let's have a look and see what the cause of that is. So if I again go break line start here, yeah, he's going to the old new prediction, which is not exactly what we want, obviously. So let's just do that again. Yeah, he's going over to an old one. So let's work out why that's doing that. 
So let's go into our behavior tree and look at the flow of information that's happening here. So it's coming in into selector, target actor is set, and going down here, target location, uh, which is not set, it's not moving to target location, it's just going towards the target actor. So um, that would be over here. So chasing, target actor is set. So when that is um, changed, it's going to abort both of these. So it's going to come out of target actor and go back up and not do this one either. It's going to just go up, okay? But it's going to then go to move to last known location. So that move to last known location is being set after the break has happened. So here we change the target actor to nothing. It's breaking out and it's doing the move to based upon that information. Now what I can do here is I can click on this observe blackboard value and turn that on and leave it like that. So now it observed this last known location and it should hopefully update because the tolerance here is only 4.75 which is tiny. So a big difference should make a big change there and it should make it move to a new last known location. So let's take a look at that in action and see if that is the case. So I'm going to go over here. There's last known location is there now. And he went to it. But if I get seen, break last known location, and he's now coming to the new last known location. Exactly what we want. Okay. So I'm going to do that. And there we go. Excuse me again. That's working really well. And there we have it. We've now got our prediction sense in our game, showing our AI able to predict where we're going to be in the future. So in the next episode, we're going to start taking a look at the EQS system. Now this system is quite involved, has lots of stuff in it, so I can't wait to get started with it by showing you the basics of how to get started with generating different items inside your EQS system. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. You can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. And if you're not subscribed yet to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.